Today I want to build with you this, and although it looks trivial, there are some very important techniques in there. And the question of how to pull this off originated from a comment on our Axiom Solver tutorial, where I baked the alpha of the original letter by simply highly subdividing that letter mesh and then using the points themselves of that mesh to store the alpha on them. However, that's not really efficient. And another way of doing that would be to bake the underlying particles position into a texture. And in this tutorial I'll do just that and I'll set it up in a way so that it can be used on render time with engines such as Redshift or Octane. So in Houdini, first thing I'm going to do as always, dropping down a geo node, diving in there and using a file node to load up the Entagma N that I prepared. So I'm just going to click here, navigate to my folder, set this to only show Illustrator files and just select that file here. Also by middle mousing on this I can see this comes in with a color, which in this case is black, so let's just append a color node, color this white, so we can see something. So that's our letter here. Let's just use the match size node to center this and scale it uniformly to be in a one by one by one bounding box. Next let's just make sure it's a polygon by converting it using a convert stop like this and then let's start adding UVs to this. Normally I'd assume that you have your UV mesh that you created somewhere and it just comes with UV coordinates. However in this case I'll just create them from scratch briefly using a UV texture node which I'll append set to orthographic projecting along the z-axis and then let's use a UV quick shade to check what we did here. So yeah, that's displaying the UV grid. All right, let's pull this to the side and drop down a poly extrude to give this letter a bit of depth, extruding it to a distance of 0.3. Let's just scroll down here, check output back. So we have both sides here and let's scroll further down here. And we can see that we already are generating texture coordinates by default. So let's append a UV quick shade again and highlight this. And you can see this is resulting in UV coordinates being projected on here. Let's hit space and five over the viewport to switch to UV space. And by default, my UV space should be in the zero zero to one one range. That's this here. However, you can see that the sides of my extruded N are protruding past this one by one square here. And also both the front and the back side of my N occupy the same space in UV coordinates here, which is gonna become an issue if we want to bake individual point positions into this texture here, which is this one by one square here, as I've got lots of polygons that point to the same pixel in that texture. And to fix this, I could either use a UV layout sop or a UV unwrap, which in this case I'm gonna use just wire that in between here and I set it up to use eight planes and set the spacing to one. Still not the most beautiful UV map, however now we don't have overlapping parts of our geometry referencing the same pixel in UV space or rather the same coordinate in UV space, so that's something we can work with. Let's hit space and one to go back to our perspective viewport and you can see a few seams here which I don't care too much about because what I'm going to do is procedurally bake my texture. So what I want to do here to create this artwork from the beginning of the video is I want to scatter a few points onto this end and then store the distance to the nearest point in a texture, which I'll map onto the end here using these UV coordinates. Let's start by scattering points onto this end here, just wiring in a scatter node after the UV unwrap like this. And let's just scatter a total of 500 points in there and let's just uncheck the relaxation iterations down here. Next I also want to create a texture which I'm going to use later for shading. And as I mentioned I want to be able to execute all this automatically on render time. And for that I'll use a two-dimensional volume which is just a pixel image if you think about it, which I'll turn into a texture using COPS. So I'm just going to drop down a volume node, set this to be a two-dimensional plane, and I'm going to call it D for distance. Now let's just highlight this, not much to see, let's just give it a small initial value so we can see something. And if you remember, our UV space, if we switch to that, ranges between 0, 0 and 1, 1. However, when we go back to our volume here, this goes from minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So let's just move this over so it ranges from 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, like this. Also, let's scroll down here and increase the sampling divisions to say maybe 2K. So that's 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels now. And let's also dial back the initial value to 0. All right, now let's take this volume and rasterize the close point distances from those points to this mesh into this volume. Let's use a volume wrangle to do this. We are working on this volume here. We are taking a look at these points here, which are scattered on this geometry here. So we need all those three inputs. First, I want to create a few sliders, namely two sliders that let me dial in the minimum and maximum distance of the points we want to find. So let's create a float, call it min, and set it to the value that we're going to read from a float channel and call this one min underscore 
distance. Let's just copy and paste this and call this max and the slider maximum distance. Let's create those two sliders and the minimum distance. I can leave that at zero with the maximum distance. For this example, I want to set it to a rather low value, maybe 0.025. Twenty-five, like this. Now, remember, this wrangle is running over this volume here. Again, let's increase that value here a bit so we can see something. So we're running this VEX code here for each pixel that's in this two-dimensional plane here, this image. And the first thing I want to do is find out at which point in space each pixel is after it has been mapped onto this N here. To do so, in my VEX code, I'll create a vector. Let's call it SP pause for sample position. And we're going to use the UV sample function to look up from the geometry coming in through this third input slot, slot with the ID 2, the position that is stored at a certain UV coordinate. So up here, let's see the attribute storing the UV coordinates is the UV attribute here. So using this UV coordinate from this geometry here, we want to look up the position at our current pixel position like this. Remember, this volume's positions can only go from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 0, which is exactly the value range stored in this UV coordinate here. And we're using these value ranges to look up at which position in space each of those pixels gets mapped onto the surface of this N here. Now, from this position we just looked up, let's find the closest point here by creating an integer storing NPT for the closest point number, and we're using the near point to find the nearest point coming in through the second slot here, slot with the ID 1, closest point to that sample position we just looked up, SP pause. So now for each pixel in that texture we mapped on this N here, we are finding now the nearest point coming in via this geometry stream here. Now let's get that nearest point's position. Let's call this one N pause for near position and look it up from that point we just found. So coming in through our second input slot, we want to look up the point position from the point number NPT, that's the nearest one. Finally, let's calculate the distance from our pixels position that has been projected onto the N to the closest point coming in through this geometry stream here, which we're gonna do by just calculating, let's call it D, the distance between N pause, that's the closest point's position, and our sample pause. Remember the position that a pixel had when projected onto this N here. And what we can do now is just directly write that out Remember, we called this volume D here. So let's just try and write out a float value D and set it to the D we just calculated. And now we can see we're getting this here, something that looks a lot like Wally noise. The underlying algorithm of Wally noise is very similar to what we're doing here. And just for a quick test, let's try to map this texture onto this letter N here. And for that, we have to convert this volume here into a texture. We do so by using a copnet a compositing network, which I'll just drop down next to the volume wrangle here, dive in there and drop down a SOP import. And I want to point this SOP here to the volume wrangle that we just created. And I'll just hit set resolution from SOP and set planes from SOP and then go over to the composite view here. And you can see now we imported this volume as a two-dimensional image into our compositing network. The only thing I want to do is go to the image tab here, delete this custom planes and instead select C RGB from our image planes here. So that takes care of our image planes being correctly named for Houdini's nomenclature, generating a 16-bit floating point RGB image from our volume. Let's do the SOP import, just append a null and call this one out underscore texture like this. And let's just highlight it here. So that's displayed in our composite view. Okay, let's go back and also go to our scene view here. Now to load that texture we just created in the copnet into this UV quick shade here, instead of pointing it to a file, we are gonna use what's called op syntax. So we're gonna write down op column, and then it's this weird quotation mark, at least weird from a German perspective. So I think that's what the French use as accent grave. And we're just gonna drop down two of those. And in between, we're gonna spell out op full path and then parentheses. And then we're gonna point this to this null we just created in here. So that's a relative path going up one level and then into this cop two net one. And then we call this one out underscore texture. So in the UV quick shade, let's call this one out underscore texture. That of course did not work because of course this two this path here has to be in quotation marks. So now we're getting there. And now you can see 
that when we ghost those points here, you can see that this texture map is mapping the distances from zero, so black where the point is smack on the texture, to some grayish value where each texture pixel has a certain distance from the nearest points. So to build that look we've seen in our artwork, let's just save this and in our volume wrangle, let's remap this distance here a bit. So the first thing I want to do is fit it. So let's refit D. So we're going to take D and fit it between our minimum and maximum values that we had and remap it to be between 0 and 1, like this. So now you can see immediately the texture looks quite different here. And now if I increase or decrease the maximum distance and then trigger recooking by just switching the view flag briefly to this cop net and back to our UV quick shade, you can see I can dial in the look of this texture. Let's reset that maximum distance here and add to it a ramp. So again, we're going to use a channel ramp. Call this one remap underscore distance to remap D. Let's just create that slider, that ramp, sorry, that's down here. And now let's adjust this ramp here a bit. Let's move this point over 2.9, move this into, I don't know, 0.8. Let's just have a small valley here. So 0.7 and then 0.6 again. Let's just add another valley here at 0.5 and then let's go down to 0.4 again and let's recook this here. Go back to our UV shade and you can see now we're getting to a look that is very similar to what we've seen in our artwork. The nice thing about this, let's just save this and I'll just go to my default layout for octane shading, just creating those three tabs here, setting one to out, one to shop and one to mat. I'm gonna create a render target and an octane node as well as a camera by control clicking on the camera. And then in the shop net, I'll just set my octane up to use path tracing. And instead of using a daylight environment, I'm going to use a texture, which I'll just choose here. And I already pre-selected this one. I think it was just a white HDR. So that's gamma to one. And in our material context, let's build this ends material here by dropping down an octane material builder, diving in there. And for now, I just want to use a very simple diffuse material to illustrate the principle. This one goes into the material out. And then all I want to do is look up this texture here in a very similar manner that I looked up this texture in the UV quick shade here. So let's just copy this expression here, go to our matnet and octane and drop down a texture node, in this case an image RGB. And in here under the file name, I'll just paste the expression I copied. However, I have to point this explicitly to my OBJ Geo1 network. So instead of those two points here, I'll write down forward slash OBJ forward slash and then I call this Geo1 and that should point to this copnet's output. Let's wire that into the diffuse, go up one level and just drag that node onto the letter we created here. Go back to our main level here and I'll just append a null, call this one out underscore geo and my UV unwrapped end goes in here. That's what I want to highlight. Go up one level like this. Let's save this, keep our fingers crossed and go to Octane's IPR. And you can see we are looking up this texture on render time. However, there is a bit of a messed up texture and it took me a while to figure that out. That comes from the fact that Octane is not really good with n-gons here. So what we have to do when we highlight the smooth wire shaded mode, you can see that the front and back side of this n are an n-gon. So to fix that, what I like to do is in the poly extrude, let's just group those by checking front and back groups. So now I have the front and the back side of this n in their individual group. And after the poly extrude, I'll just wire in a divide. You know, I could go for remeshing this. However, in this case, I just want to be really simple. Why in this divide in here and set it to work only on the back and front group. So now this is divided into triangles. And now if we go up one level, save this and re-render using the IPR, you can see the texture is now coming over correctly. One last thing that I could try fixing is you can see here in these areas, there seems to be a point very nearby on the other side of this letter N here, which is coming through as we're currently only looking at points by their proximity to a texture's pixel. And we are not checking on which side of our geometry the respective close point is. So one idea to fix that, for example, would be to look up the projected texture's pixels normal on this geometry and compare it to the nearest points normal. And if they are pointing apart into different directions, or if their directions cross a certain threshold, then we just disregard that point here. And I'll provide that code in the download for you. The only other thing I'll briefly do is go back into my geo here, copy and paste that null here, wire it into the scatter, call this one out underscore particles. Again, highlight my out geo, go up one level, create a new geo node, call this one maybe particles. Dive in there, drop down an OBJ merge, an object merge, and I'll just merge in the out particles I created previously into this 
Geo node here. So now if I go up on this Geo node here, I can set up in Octane the particles rendering. So I'm just checking render particles as spheres. And let's give this a small default radius of say 0.005. Also in my material net, let's call this one solid. Copy, paste this, call this one particles. I'll just go in there, delete the texture for the particles and in my materials diffuse, I'll add an emission. In this case, let's go for a black body. I'll just wire that into the emission. Dial that back from its temperature to something really low, say 1800, and also check surface brightness and dial this back to a power of, I don't know, maybe 10. And then going back to our OBJ level onto the particles, I'll assign this in the render slot. Just gonna pick the material particles I just created. Again, saving this and restarting the IPR. And now you can see we added those points, those particles into our rendering with the texture being correctly mapped on the underlying geometry. The last thing I want to point out is that if you want to change this procedurally generated textures resolution, you can do so by going into the geo and on the volume here. When you scroll down, you can see the uniform sampling divisions. That's basically the resolution. So if I wanted to set this to 4K, I'd enter 40, 96 pixels. And then all I have to do is either go to the copy net here, dive in there and under the SOP import, under SOP, click set resolution from SOP. So that'll update the image's size here. Or I could dynamically link this by going back to the geo and highlighting the volume here, clicking in the uniform sampling divisions, right clicking in here, going to copy parameter, going back into the COP net and under the SOP import in the override size, let's just highlight this, right click in here and paste relative reference and do the same thing for the second input here, like so. So now that is linked up. So now I can go back to my geo and dynamically change the procedural text resolution by just going into the volume node here and dialing in the sampling divisions like so. The neat thing about this approach is that it runs on render time. So there's no multiple passes like baking out a texture first and re-importing this and rendering this. This all runs in one go. And also this runs on third-party renders such as Octane or such as Redshift. And in comparison to my very lazy approach when I dissolved this letter using Axiom where I just remeshed this N really finely and just used its points to store the closest point distance this technique can also work on geometry that is very low poly with the only trade-off that you have to take care of UV coordinates and creating half decent UVs for your geometry. But again, Houdini's UV layout or UV unwrap are okayish tools if you are lazy like me. And if you are not lazy like me and actually want to learn more or just plainly support us in what we're doing, you might want to consider becoming a patron of ours and not only supporting us but also gaining access to more in-depth courses, for example about volumes, vex or particles. And to everyone already supporting us, thanks so much. It is through your support that Entagma is possible. And a very special thank you goes out to important looking pirates, Sean Edwards, Chris Hebert, Rafik Anadol, and Jeff H. Thanks so much, folks. So as always, intrigued to see what you guys cook up using those techniques. So don't be shy sharing your artwork. And until next time, it's cheers and goodbye.